Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have a very easy beginner watercolor Wednesday for you. We are going to paint this little motif here um, on a greeting card. These are inexpensive uh, Strathmore greeting cards. You can find them at Jerry's Artorama. You can get them in boxes of 10 or um, 30, 50, 100, I believe. And they do come in a couple sizes, but I get the big boxes of the five by sevens because that's what I use the most. And they come with envelopes, which you can also paint on. And I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. I'm gonna be using a watercolor colors from our sponsor jerrysautorama.com. These are the Lucas watercolors. I have the set of 48. You certainly don't need that many colors, but um, it is kind of fun and I do like these watercolors for the palette. It seems to be more give you more of like a vintage look and I just think it's very pleasant to paint with and I just like the effect that I get with it. So um, we're going to do this today. Um, you can paint it larger if you want and if you do like these techniques I show you today, you might want to check out my watercolor floral workshop where we do a lot of um, dozens of different stroke work flowers you can combine to make different motifs like we're going to do on this card. So I'm going to start off with a number two pointed round or you can use a liner. That's completely up to you. And we're going to take some, um, I'm going to mix some um, green yellow, which is like an azo green with a little bit of phthalo blue. You can also use sap green if that's what you have. Um, I didn't have that in this set, or I didn't like the sap green in this set. It's a little bit more muted, so I wanted to mix my own. And I'm gonna put three stems, and I'm gonna make these stems, I'm moving my whole arm, and that's gonna give me a nice, smooth, um, a nice, smooth look here. So one, and I'm letting the, the heel of my hand hit the paper, and that's gonna help me keep a steady line. One, two, and three. Okay. Next thing, oh, something else I want to do. You don't have to do this, but this is something I enjoy doing just because it helps break up um, the background and give me a loose look. I'm gonna tap on some water. And so when I'm painting, if something I'm painting happens to fall in one of these uh, splashy areas, I will get this natural kind of whoosh of color and it will just give me that loose um, effect. But if you don't like that, don't do it. You certainly don't have to. Now I'm going to grab a round brush. I'm going to grab this number four round. This is a Creative Mark uh, Kalinsky. It's a fake Kalinsky. It's from the Mimic line. I really like the fake fur brushes because you get to have the kind of joy of painting with a really fine brush, but it's cruelty free. I'm grabbing some alizarin crimson. It's a permanent alizarin crimson, It's uh, so it's not gonna fade on you, but this is a greeting card. I suggest you use whatever you have. And what I'm going to do is just make a little rosebud. And I'm gonna start by pressing my brush down at the base of the stem, and I'm just gonna twist and pull up and get this kind of like little shape here. I'm gonna do it again and make a little rosebud that way. I'm going to pull out a few other little petals And I want this one to be a little full. And I have this taped down to my mat. Typically what I would do is I would um, move my, uh, my board around so I'm pulling the strokes towards me, but I wanted to tape this down onto my media mat because I knew it was gonna kind of contain my splashes and any mess that I'm going to make. Now I'm gonna grab some of that, um, that green gold here. It's Pigment Y129. And I'm just going to make a little ball underneath. If it, if it wants to drip into the red, that's fine, as long as it doesn't mix too much. And now I'm going to grab a little bit of the phthalo blue with that. I'm actually going to switch brushes. I'm going to go back to that number two round, because you can actually do a lot with this on a card, because it's not a lot of space. And I'm just going to pull down some little strokes. This one's got a better point on it, so it's easier for this. Now the next one, I'm gonna show you another way to do it. You can do it uh, with the hip of the flower first. And see how it hit a little puddle and it gave me a little whoosh? That's fun, that's just what I want. And I grab some of that red again, that crimson. This time I'm gonna start, and I'm gonna kinda push my flower, I'm gonna start at the bottom and I'm just gonna push and twist up. And it's catching some of the loose um, loose bits of water and I like that. And if you get an edge that you don't like, you can go in and you can smooth it if you want to. 
Try not to go for perfection here because you want it to feel kind of loose. And you can also put in a little bit of a side petal if you want to be a little bit fuller. You can go in with some stronger color anywhere you want to have a little bit more color. If it, where it fades out, you're going to have more of a pink look. I like to um, start with the fatter part of the flower and um, and taper up, but you can do the other way. So for this one, I'll show you how to go top down on your rose. So we're going to start with the tip of our brush, and then we're going to press as we come down, and we're going to lift. And that gives us another rosebud. So if you're if you're sitting, you've got this taped down to your desk like I do, you can go in uh, several different ways and get your flower done. And then if you want a little petal on the side, you can. Sometimes I'll let where my um, stuff spatters kind of guide where I'm going to go with it. And you can make anything fuller just by adding some more little petals. I kind of just go by what I feel like painting. I mean, this is a very intuitive process. Um, and that course I do go through kind of like intuitively painting all these different things because I think when you're when you're composing something You may decide oh, I wish I had a bigger flower there. Oh, I, I don't have room for a bigger flower there I want to make a tiny one and that gives you the ability to do that and again go in with a little Little hip of the flower And throw in a couple little uh, little drops I'm also going to throw in, I'm just going to stick with this brush, this brush is real easy to use on this size card. I'm going to go in, I'm going to throw in a place to throw some leaves. And then I can also put in some um, other curly cues. I like to do the curly cues because where they hit any splashes, you get these really pretty effects. But you can go with fewer or more, it's completely up to you. And I also want to put in a little bit of a teal one because I'll do some small little uh, little vines that way as well. So I just got the uh, cobalt teal, which is a color that's in the 48 set, which is really pretty. Um, you can also buy any of these colors individually. And I'm just going to throw in a couple little uh, sprigs of this so I can make kind of a spray. And I am, my hand is, my arm is hovering over the table. I am taking this whole move from my shoulder. So if you can do that, that's really going to help you with the smoothness and the looseness of your, um, of your composition. Uh, for my little, my little rose buds, I think I will go with, um, I think I'll go back to that number four round. I'm going to take the yellow on its own. So I'm going to show you this round brush leaf and then we'll do flat brush little leaves on the on the teal there. I'm going to pick up a little bit of the phthalo blue on there too. And I am just going to start making some petals. Now generally on a rose bud leaf, our petals kind of uh, are symmetrical. Don't worry about the splashes. If you don't, if you didn't pre-splash your paper, you're not going to have that. So I'm just doing two strokes side by side. And generally you have about six um, petals on a, uh, on a sprig or six uh, leaves on a little vine. For your rosebuds, oh, I like that one. I like that juicy. I like to have them kind of juicy too, because I like to drip in some other colors. So I'm gonna go in and drip in some, fill those in with some paint while I'm at it. So I'll have that, uh, that option, and they get smaller as they go out. But in your fantasy world, you can put as many on there as you want. I will leave space if I've got another element that I don't want to overlap or compete with. So you also have that, that ability, or and you can just draw the shape and fill it in. Now I'm going to grab some of the phthalo blue, mix it in with that green. I'm going to draw, add some of that here and there to some of these petals. Because I like that loose look. I think it's really pretty when it hits like a splashy spot there and you have, um, when you have that sort of stuff happening. Now I'm going to go to my number two round and I'm going to pick up some of that red. Because you'll notice on um, the little buds, 
<clears throat> the little leaves, I mean. My goodness, words are tough today because I'm in the zone. I've, I've been painting this morning and I've just kind of been in that, that zone and then you'll have a hard time talking. <laughs> and I'm just going to give this little rim and I'm doing a little serrated edge because rose leaves do have this little serrated edge. I'm not doing it on everyone, but I'm doing it on some. And I don't have the paint super wet on my brush because I don't want it to mix so much with the green and get um, and get muddy. But I do want it to have that, I do want it to kind of soften when it hits the, the wet leaf and just kind of fade in. And to get that serrated look, all you have to do is just kind of tap on the edge. And you can also go in with some of the Thalo Blue Mix. I'm just mixing it into the dry stuff just to get it, uh, just to dry it out a little bit. If that blends in, that's not that's not a big deal. That's actually kind of good because it'll just give us a little interest on our leaves, and they're not gonna. It's not gonna make mud because those are the colors we use to paint the body of the leaves. So you do kind of work a little fast here. Uh, so that your paper will stay wet enough while you're doing this. Now this is a, um, these cards are inexpensive. You know, they're going to cost you less than 50 cents a piece to do. Less if you buy them in bulk. I'll put a coupon code too. I'm not sure if these are coupon eligible. It depends if they're on sale or not. Um, so I think I pay around 30 cents a card because I buy them in bulk. And honestly, they take less time for me to make them like a stamped card. And they're just fun to sit around and paint. Now you can put veins in there after it dries, but there is your big green leaves. Now we are going to do the little flat brush leaves. You can use a flat or an angle. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to use the turquoise color. Now this, I will tell you, this is easier if you're taped to a board where you can move your paper around. But, um, but I just wanted to keep it simple and I just taped it down to my mat. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your brush down by your vein and you're just gonna pull and lift and you're gonna get these cute teeny little petals that are just so great for filling a design. I call these filler leaves and I go into all sorts of filler motifs in that course if you want to check it out. So I have to kind of contort my arm around when I'm doing this Oh, I love it when I hit a little, look, that one made like a perfect leaf, just hitting it just like that. I love it when I hit the little splashes because I, it just gives me a little bit of a unexpected, um, unexpected little run of color. And the nice thing about the colors in this set, a lot of them are granulating. Um, there's a lot of earth, like mineral pigments that have that, um, that beautiful granulation, especially used in a really wet wash. And I just think that's really pretty for something like this. There we go. Oh. That timed out perfectly. Okay, I like that. So we got that pretty little spray there. Um, and honestly, the more the more practiced you get at this, the more clean your design will be. So you probably will want to be splashing it just to give you that um, to give you that looseness. And this is a wonderful thing. Even if you're not like crazy about doing this type of brushwork, um, it will develop your brush handling skills. Uh, it's something I did when I was a teenager is I took toll painting lessons, which is a form of decorative art, and um, it really develops your brush skills. And you might think that that, that it looks a little fuddy-duddy, um, or it looks too um, too old-fashioned, but you are going to develop brush skills if you do like a traditional toll painting or rolls modeling class. Those are good skills to know. And, you know, I am kind of twisting my arm around in a weird position here, so uh, so feel free to, you know, move your um, move your piece as you go. You don't really need to tape it down. It's such a, we're not getting this so, totally soaked, but I do like to have a white border because I'm going to splash some more color on there. If you want to make a, a bigger leaf, you just simply drag it further before lifting. Oh, let's, let's do it a little bit darker. Just drag it further before lifting. And you can do that. Sometimes I want to fill a space a little bit more, so I will do my leaves a little bit bigger. Okay. Um, I think at this point I'm going to do, I'm just going to dab in some other colors that I want, do a little spattering. I love to add yellow ochre. I just, I think that color is so pretty. Um, 
I like to fill in, especially if I've gone to the trouble of taping down. Now what I'll do with a card, you probably tell at the beginning of this video that that card, I've used that tape before. Um, I can usually reuse a card, the tape I use for a card painting a few times before uh, I need to replace it. So that's kind of nice. I'm going to give us a little spritz. You don't have to do this, okay? Keep that in mind. If this is like, whoa, Lindsay, this is just way too crazy. Look at that. We've got that nice pink um, mingling there. I like that. Anything you want to, with your card, you do whatever you want to do. Don't feel like you have to do it if you don't want to. Because that's a great thing about your art is it's yours. And you don't have to follow anybody else's rules. I like in this, this uh, stage too because I can use up the leftovers. Now I did kind of leave a little open space here because I figure you can stamp a thank you or a happy birthday or whatever you want. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that on this one. I think I'll save this one for, uh, you know, in case I need a different occasion, in case I need a thank you or thinking of you or with sympathy. Um, it's nice to have those on hand. It's so difficult to make sympathy cards because, you know, you're... You don't want to say the wrong thing, and sometimes you second guess yourself. You're like, is this gonna, is this, was this the right message? And I think having those done ahead of time is kind of nice because that way you don't have to hem and haw, and you can actually get that card out, you know, when it can be its most comforting. So something like this, I think, would also be really pretty for that. Maybe go a little bit lighter in the color of the flower. Okay, and then. Um, what you can do, if you have any of the flowers that are open enough that you can see the insides, what you can do is take that small brush, get the yellow ochre kind of thick, because yellow ochre, even though it's a watercolor, it's one of your more opaque watercolors, you can just do a couple little dabs, uh, if you can see in the center there. And you can get a little bit of the, the yellow centers, like you would have on a rose bush rose, which is when you have kind of like a loose motif here, um, that's kind of handy. So what I like to do is just kind of dry this off. You can blot it a little bit if you uh, have any big puddles. This one, you're, when you're pretty sure you've done all you want to do to it. And while I'm drying, I'll show you the finished card. We've got the uh, nice white border from peeling off the tape, and then I did some stamping. I kind of regretted the stamping after I had it down there, so what I'm going to do is show you the stamping on the envelope and show you how to just doodle some motifs around that. That way, if you are a stamper and you're not, you know, maybe you don't want to go buy watercolor paper, you just want to, you know, just add an accent on your cardstock or on your envelope or whatever. I'm going to show you um, kind of a more dry technique that you don't need to have watercolor paper for because it's not going to be like a really juicy and wet one. I think I can take that off now. And also heating the tape makes it easier to remove, so that's kind of nice. My tape still has quite a bit of wet paint on there, so let's try not to drip it on the card. Generally, I just make sure everything's completely dry. Also, um, wet paper, if your paper's wet and you try to remove the tape while your paper's wet, it's going to be more likely to tear. But heating your tape, this is just regular Dollar Tree masking tape, heating it will make it uh, a little bit better. And I would sign it, you know, definitely sign it. Um, I went a little bit, a little bit bolder, a little more splashier with that. But, um, you know, you can, you can putter with it and add to it as you like. So for the envelope, what I'm gonna do, I got a little few spatters on there, but that's no big deal. I'm gonna, I've put uh, a couple clear stamps. I put happy on this side of my block and birthday on that side. These are just inexpensive. Um, well, you can find them inexpensively, I should say. These are stamping up, they're not terribly inexpensive. And I think this might even be a retired set, but I'm gonna go in with a really light teal ink. These are Gina K ink cubes. I prefer ink cubes to the full size pads. Uh, I'm gonna go in with a second tone and go like three quarters of the way. And then I'm gonna go in with this lighter tone and just go to like the bottom third or so. So I get like an ombre effect. Always go light to dark so you don't contaminate your ink pads. And I'm gonna stamp happy right here. I like the clear stamps on, um, on any textured paper, like watercolor paper, because they have a little more smush to them and they will get down in the grooves a little bit easier. You don't want to do anything super detailed because the bumpiness of your watercolor paper, or even like your like these envelopes that come with the watercolor paper, is a little has a little texture to it. Um, you just want to make sure that you're gonna be able to get in all the grooves of the paper, and the and a less detailed clear stamp will give you that ability. 
Okay, I'm going to use the same. I'm going to use this um, number two round here. I'm going to put in a, make sure it's in camera, I'm going to put in a little flourish here, a little twirl, a little curvy line, I should say. And I'm going to do one in teal. Cobalt teal is one of my favorite shades of watercolor. Uh, I like to overlap them a little bit. Don't worry about them being perfect. I'm going to grab some of the crimson, alizarin crimson here, permanent alizarin crimson. I'm going to do just a little tiny um, one, two, three dabs. Then make some dabs around it. And just make a little rose that way, okay? Then I'm just going to do a couple little rosebuds by just pressing and lifting and giving it another little mark on the side. Press and lift, mark on the side. Going with some of that green that I mixed. It was, again, the... You can use sap green or use the green gold and a little phthalo blue. A little ball for the hip. Ball for the hip. And you can do the same thing on this one and then give it a few little leaves. You can do as much as you want with it. This is an envelope, you don't have to stress out about it. So now I'm going to go back to that small flat brush here. I'm going to pick up that green that I mixed. And I'm simply just going to make a little flat brush. And I'll show you about turning. See, it's just easier if you can turn as you go, because then you're always kind of pulling the stroke to your dominant hand. Now you probably would want to clean off your desk a little bit before you did this. And you can take a little more time than I am. But it's basically the same technique I showed you with the teal on the other, um, on the other example. But I think that would be really cheerful to get in the mail and something hand painted. And a lot of people actually do save and frame hand painted cards like that. When I teach classes at the local library, we always work on these greeting cards because um, some people it's their first time and I never know like how experienced somebody is coming into class. So this gives them like an achievable like project they can finish in one class rather than, you know, uh, having them, you know, if they can't make the next one, they're not, you know, out of luck. And there you go. It's a very simple little envelope and you just combine them and you've got a cute little set that you can give away. I did the um, I did the stamping the exact same way. I just uh, did take a brush and I kind of outlined the happy because um, I think there was a little dampness when I stamped it on my watercolor paper. But uh, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this and you can find all the supplies that I used at our sponsor jerrysartorama.com except for the stamps. Those you could find in any craft store. And I will link up all these supplies as well as a coupon code below. Thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. Until next time, happy crafting.